Hello viewers. I am Dr. K S R Radhika, working as associate professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, S R K R Engineering College, Bhimvaram, Andhra Pradesh. In this session, I am going to explain the characteristics of different software architectures that are used in embedded applic embedded system applications. The objectives of today's lecture is to understand the characteristics of different software architectures. So now we will see the different characteristics of software architectures. So here in this table we have specified all the different four different software architectures and also the different characteristics how they are performed in each and every architecture. So first of all what are the different four architectures the four architectures are round robin architecture round robin with interrupts architecture function queue scheduling architecture real time operating system architecture so first of all we will see about the priorities available in the case of round robin architecture so we don't have any priorities for the for the tasks Okay, so and in the case of round robin with interrupts architecture, so here we have introduced the concept of interrupts. So here we will have both the interrupt routines and also the task code. So here uh, the interrupt routines in the priority order. So that means here the interrupt routines are given the different priority orders and then all the task code at the same priority. So here the task code are given. of same priority but the interrupt routines depending upon their importance the priority is given for the different interrupt routines and the next one is function queue scheduling so here in the case of round robin with interrupts architecture the the task code is given or task code all the task code uh, are given at the same priority but in the case of uh, function queue scheduling so the interrupt routines are given in priority order and also the task code also uh, the task code are also given in the priority order so that means what depending upon the importance of that particular routine or importance of that particular task the priorities have been assigned in the case of function queue scheduling and the next one is real time operating system here also same as that one that is here the interrupt routines are are assigned the priorities and also the task code are also assigned the priorities so whatever whichever have the high priority that will be given importance in the in this architecture and the next characteristic we will see it as the worst case response time for the task code so whenever we are considering the task code in the case of round robin all are given of same importance so that's why here the worst case uh, response time for the task code will be the sum of execution time of all the task code so that is because just in the loop we are giving for each and every task we are giving in the continuous loop so that's why what will be the worst case so whichever suppose we have we, we can assume that worst case means all the all the devices requires the service so that means the sum of execution time of all the task code so that is the worst case response for the response in the case of round robin architecture that is sum of all the task code and the next one is in the case of in in, in round robin with interrupts architecture so how what will be their worst case response time so it is total of execution time of all the task code plus the execution time for the interrupt routines so here we have introduced the topic of interrupts in the case of round robin with interrupts so whenever an interrupt is whenever an interrupt occurs so that interrupt is Uh, it is it is a routine that should be compulsorily executed so that's why here it is total of sum of execution time of all the task code that is same as this round robin plus the execution time for the interrupt routines so it also uh, the uh, the execution time of the interrupt routines is also added here 
this is the worst case uh, worst case uh, response time in the case of in in the architecture round robin with interrupts so suppose if uh, no interrupts have been occurred so then it will be same as the round robin architecture and the next one is function queue scheduling in this in this one the worst case uh, response time is execution time of the longest function plus the execution time for the interrupt routines so here already already while discussing about the function queue scheduling we have seen that whenever some uh, for example some longest uh, task is being executed so then we cannot interrupt that task in between so what will happen so it is uh, the execution time for the interrupts plus the execution time that means the worst in the worst case we have to consider the uh, the longest function so that's why out of all the functions we will consider the worst case means we will consider the longest function so that's why it is the execution time of the longest function plus execution time for the interrupts here it is the execution of all the task code but here it is only execution for the longest function plus this is common for both that is the interrupt routines and uh, in the case of uh, real time operating system the worst case uh, response time for the task code is so here suppose if interrupt occurs which is of which, which is of very urgent operation so then it is it, it, it just whatever task be executing so just it will interrupt and that means the processing task will be suspended and the processor time will be given for this particular urgent task so that's why it is that means what here it is being stopped but here in this case so it should be completed and then only it will be given that is uh, the whatever task that is being executing currently that should be completed after completing only then only it will give for your particular interrupt so that's why here we are saying that it is execution time for the longest function so here we are saying that it is zero why we are saying it is zero is because once an urgent task once an important interrupt occurs so what will happen whatever task code it is executing just it will suspend that task code that is it will be suspended and then immediately the control will be given for the interrupt so that's why it is zero zero plus execution time for the interrupt route so that means here in the case of out of all these four so here the execution time is reduced in the case of real time operating system so this is about worst case response time for the task code and the next characteristic is stability of response when the code changes so suppose when the code uh, code changes so how we how the stability of the response will be so in the case of round robin architecture it is very poor and in the case of round robin with interrupts good for interrupt routines but it is somewhat poor for the task code so and in the case of function queue scheduling it is relatively good for both the interrupts and also for the task code but in the case of real time operating system it is very good for both the interrupt routines and also for the task code so that means suppose if some high priority task uh, is uh, arrived also we are giving the processor time immediately and the next one is simplicity so this round robin architecture is very simple and this can be used for simple applications like uh, digital multimeter digital watches etc and the round robin with interrupts it is a little more sophisticated than the round robin because here only um, interrupts concept has been introduced so here one one important thing that you have to deal is uh, the shared data between the interrupt routines and the task code so if you handle that this is also somewhat simple architecture only and the next one is function queue scheduling in function queue scheduling here also so this is uh, one one point extra with function queue scheduling than the round robin is here only 
the difference is here you will be maintaining the q of function pointers when compared with round robin with interrupts so here so that's why here also you need to deal with the shared data and also you you must write the function q code so that is you have to create a code and you have to uh, maintain the operations that is nq and dq operations for the function pointers to be maintained in your q that is uh, one extra thing that we have to do in the case of function q schedule and the next one is real time operating system so the next one is real time operating system this is more complicated so the complexity is being increased like this that is from round robin it is increased to um, this real time operating system so that's why this is most complex and uh, here the complexity is also there inside the operating system itself so here because uh, the rtos um, the rtos uh, needs some processing time so that's why here the mo the most complex although much of the complexity is inside the operating system itself so that's why this is somewhat a complex uh, um, architecture and this is used for uh, important uh, applications like nuclear reactors uh, and next uh, uh, it is uh, it is used for uh, different uh, important applications like uh, nuclear reactors uh a traffic control system file of um, flight control system like that. so this is so real time up real time operating system can be used for complex embedded system application so these are the different characteristics and also the differences between all the four different software architectures that can be used for your embedded system so the summary is here we have seen in detail about the characteristics or the differences of different software architectures that can be used for different embedded system applications so if you like my video please like share and subscribe to our channel thank you